be an easier way to make a living than this. Oh dear. Right, apologies to those of you who have been lamenting the fact there have been no camper van videos recently. Bear with us, this is the last railway themed vlog until a long time because we're gonna head south today and then we'll be back up in Scotland and then we're off to the Hebrides in a camper van, so stick with us. But for those of you interested, as you may have guessed, this is a trip on the Caledonian Sleeper. We are currently at Inverness. You see the sign? We're currently at Inverness, but we're not getting this sleeper. This is one of the old sleepers, one of the original stock. But the sleeper from Inverness down to London takes 12 hours. And I think that's too long for Dougal. So we're gonna get the regular train down to Glasgow, and then we're gonna get the new sleeper train, the new stock from Glasgow down to London. Go on that one. I think we, we are though. Come on, dudes, let's go get the next one. So like I said, you can get the sleeper direct from Inverness, but we've chosen to break our journey in Glasgow. That means we can give Dougal a rest, and then it's only seven and a half hours from Glasgow to London. Uh, so now we're gonna go and eat at the dog-friendly 13th Note, one of my favorite places to eat in Glasgow. Uh, also does great vegetarian and vegan food, as well as being dog-friendly. Then we're gonna go to Glasgow Green, try and wear Dougal out with a bit of ball chasing, and then we'll be off to Central Station and taking the Caledonian Sleeper. You know where we're going, don't you? Thanks. Come on, dudes. Right, so we're at Glasgow Central. Um, and what's interesting is that the train is not on the main departure board. But if you look there, it will say Caledonian Sleeper 2340 Sleeper to London Euston, now boarding on platform 10. So, platform 10, let's go. And this is really good to see. You've got a fresh water point right opposite platform 10 where we're going to get the sleeper nice one network rail Right, so 
so we're all checked in. We checked in at the ticket barrier. Uh, we have to pay £30 for Dougal. So when you travel on the Caledonian sleeper with a dog, you have to have a cabin to yourself. Now fortunately, with the new stock, you can have a standard class cabin solo. Uh, so we got a solo, that's one without a shower and toilet. Or of course if there's two of you travelling and you're sharing a cabin, you can also have the dog. But you can't share a cabin with someone you don't know, with the dog. And also you can't travel with a dog in the seated accommodation. You have to have a sleeping cabin if you want to travel with the dog. And it has to be only you or just your party in that cabin. So the dog is a £30 cleaning supplement and when we checked in we've been told we've got to go to the club car and see Brian and pay our £30. The interesting thing is uh, I didn't think dogs were allowed in the club car and you can't leave dogs unattended in the cabin so I don't quite know what I'm meant to do but here's Coach L. So Coach L, room number seven is us. Go on in. Good boy. What do you reckon, Dukes? Coach L, she said, no, Dougal, no, go on and stay on. Here we go. Oh, that's narrow. That is narrow. Come on, Dukes. Ugh, it's not, not a good start, is it? No toilet. All right. Come on, Dougal. Oh, oh gosh, oh I say, oh right, let's uh, get rid of my bag and give you a guided tour. Okay, little tour of our cabin here on the new Caledonian sleeper. So I'm going to be comparing this to the previous incarnations of the sleeper. So under the, the banks here you can see there's space for Dougal, oh just Dougal cheer up. But one thing I noticed straight away is that even though we have so low use of this cabin, they've got both bunks made up and you cannot move the ladder. Now on the old stock, you could get rid of the ladder if you were in the lower bunk. But on this one, it's fixed. You can't move it. So not so, not so keen on that. Um, we have our amenity kit with earplugs, eye mask and soap room service menu wow so uh, I guess you can call the host uh, main course haggis sneeps and tatties nine pounds macaroni cheese seven pounds so it's not too bad at all is it um, sandwich four pounds tonics caramel wafer 80p apple 50p so pretty good you've got wine there wine for about five pound a small bottle and then whiskey is, gosh, £6.50, £7.20 a measure, so pretty good. And then you have your onboard magazine. Now up by the head here is a USB to charge your phone and you've got somewhere to put it over there. Night light. Main light. So that's the top bunk, but on the bottom bunk you've got the main set of switches here which is the two main sockets, two USBs, call button for the host and window light. Well that's posh isn't it? As well as, as, well as the same controls as there are in the upper bunk. So we have a full length mirror here on the door. So you know what this means, folks, don't you? Hello! Sorry. Room to hang the jacket. Oh, and this is neat as well. I missed off here. You can actually dim the lights. I don't know if the camera's picking that up. Oh, yeah, it's making the camera go funny. So you can dim the lights as well. And then finally, over here, you have Wash basin, hot and cold water, 
complimentary water and a key card so that if you go to the club car which we're going to have to to go and pay for the dog you can lock your cabin and then this is really neat um, you get free tea or coffee in the morning so you can hang that out and if you want to pay for breakfast um, this is really good bacon roll is £3.50 or a vegan smoothie is also £3.50 I think we might go for that uh, yeah that looks really good right so there's the tour of the little cabin so now let's go to the club car and pay for the dog yes Dougal 30 pound for you he doesn't look impressed right so this looks like the lounge car oh, I say that's very nice isn't it right let's go and pay for the dog right so we've paid our cleaning fee for Dougal 30 pounds thank you so while we're here I'll just give you a quick I'll show you the, uh, the seated carriage. We won't go in because there's no dogs in there. So this is the seated carriage. There. Come on Deuce. Let's go get some fresh air before the train goes. Come on. So if anyone is a wheelchair user here, oh, no, that's not a good start, is it? So the uh, accessible toilet is out of order, just like the toilet next to our cabin. So here you go. This is obviously the accessible cabin. Sorry about the flicker. So you've got plenty of room to transfer, sink. Yeah, so plenty of room and a big pneumatic door entry in and out. Excellent. Right, so we found a working toilet and uh, well, this is it. It's a toilet. So we're going to walk uh, a couple of carriages to uh, come and spend a penny. Oh dear. So, table there. And let's have a look at this. Soap has definitely got smaller. Oh, dear plugs. Good morning. It is twenty to seven. Just had a knock at the door and the lovely attendant brought in this which was my breakfast which is complimentary because of the lack of water and some tea and some biscuits and uh, yeah it slept okay um wouldn't say it was the best night i've ever had the one thing i would say is that I don't think this new stock is particularly quiet or particularly smooth. In fact, I would say the older train was a bit quieter and a bit smoother. Um, but with the earplugs in and everything, you know, it wasn't too bad. It's just when you had to hit some rough points and things like that, it, it, it really did wake you up. But um, yeah. So I just had my breakfast. Um, we have until eight o'clock to vacate the cabins. So there's no rush, which is nice. Yes, yeah, so I'm gonna have my breakfast and then we're gonna to head to St Pancras. Morning. 
Oh, I tell you what, you don't get breakfast in bed with EasyJet. That's plastic. That's disappointing, that's plastic. Oh. Still better than flying. Okay, so we now are at the park between Euston and St Pancras, giving Dougal a bit of fresh air, some water and a bit of play with the ball. So overall, how do we rate the experience with Caledonian Sleeper's new trains? Well, let's focus on the positives to start with. And the great thing is, if you're traveling with a dog, you don't need to pay for both berths because you need to have the entire cabin. If you're traveling on your own, you only have to pay for the one berth the ticket, a single ticket for a solo classic cabin without an ensuite is about £160 and then it's £30 for the dog. It sounds a lot, it is a lot, but then when you compare the single train fare plus a hotel and the fact you're saving at least a day of your time, then suddenly it's not too bad. So that's a step in the right direction and also the fact that Caledonian Sleeper now charge £30 for the dog, whereas Scott Rail, when they ran the franchise, it used to be £90 for the dog. So that's an improvement. Great for the USB points and the sockets in the cabin. The staff were all amazing, really friendly. I, I love the fact you still get your cup of tea in the morning. That was great. But what about the things that didn't go quite so well? There was no toilet in the carriage, no water to the sink. The trouble is, as trains get more and more advanced because people want more and more things, there are more and more things to go wrong. So it was, you know, it wasn't great, but it wasn't the end of the world. I would say the thing that probably shocked me the most, that I didn't really enjoy the most, was the poor ride quality. The fact that we were jolted around quite a bit in the night. I was expecting something a lot smoother than we got. I do wonder why they didn't go for articulated stock on these new trains, but there you go. But overall, it was a positive experience. Would I do it again? Yes, I would do it again. So I hope you enjoyed coming with us. If you did enjoy it, you know what to do. Give us a thumbs up, subscribe if you don't already. It just leaves me to say from Dougal and from me, thanks for tuning in. Dougal, you're gonna come and say goodbye to your public. <laughs>